<laughs> That's my intro. Okay. So I want to talk about this question of holding space. Holding space for people in our lives. But first, I want to say a couple things that are on my heart. I'm not sure why. Um, one is... Um, if you've never watched me in the morning before, um, this is basically me recording what I do anyway, which is talk out what I'm thinking. So my, I've been um, really into uh, tapping into the power of my own mind and tapping it. Look at my outfit. <laughs> tapping into the power of the universe and the fact that the universe is cooperating with me in creating the life that I want. And so, um, that's been since January. And that's flight attendant. Cute. So, what I've been doing, uh, I've had this long commute for almost two years now. And um, it started out, I was listening to audiobooks, and then I, I discovered, or a podcast discovered me, or I discovered a podcast, and then I was listening to podcasts, so many podcasts, Fire Drill Podcast was my favorite, and which led me into personal development, which led me into really changing my life, so, um, and even the way that I think about my life, so... Um, it got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't keep quiet anymore. I was making um, notes about, you know, things that I needed to say. And it, it kind of started out, you know, as me telling myself, this was about this time last year, or maybe in the fall of last year, I was telling myself, I'm going to start a blog. I'm going to start a blog. I'm going to start a blog, right? But I was procrastinating, but I was making all these notes. And at first they were like, I was jotting things down real quickly in these notebooks that are so unhelpful. I do not recommend that. And then I was making these audio recordings and I have so many audio recordings on my phone that I was just thinking things out and thinking like, okay, I'm going to transcribe this and it's going to be a blog. And once it got to be like hundreds of those, I was like, this is ridiculous. I am not going to transcribe these because if I can't even have the time or find the time or make the time to transcribe one of them, I'm certainly not gonna go back and transcribe a hundred of my own. I mean, I'm not a transcriptionist. Like I'm not, that's not my, that's not my spiritual gift, right? I do like to type and I'm good at typing, but I'd rather do it, you know, real time or whatever. Like those can be inspiration, but they're not gonna be my blog. I also realized when I listened back to a few of them that my my thoughts had evolved so quickly that the person who wrote or who dictated those first hundred um, notes was not the same person who was going to be typing them back again. I had grown so much so quickly. So then I stopped. I stopped recording them, and I was just like, "No, we're not going to record them." We're just, yeah, and I talk, I talk about myself like in the plural form, like it's a we. I don't know why, but it's always worked for me. So I was like, okay, I'm not going back to do, I'm not going to go back to those recordings. I'm going forward and going back and thinking back and all that is just going to slow me down. So if I'm going to start a blog, I need to do it from the real time going forward. In January, I discovered Abraham Hicks and Law of Attraction, I think. I think it was January. But I started um, realizing that I definitely could not go back. Because going back, hi, Diane. I'm so glad you caught me. I tried to send a message today early. Um, but I realized, you know, Abraham Hicks was really saying, do not look back at your past. That's not a good, you know, you don't want to go back and keep reha rehashing the past because you keep those things active in your vi vibration. And my initial thought, how's the audio? Can you hear it okay or do I need to put my ear thing in? Because I don't know if the road noise is loud or what. But my initial thought was that I would go back and start from the beginning of my midlife crisis 
journey and tell the story month by month of what I would have learned through that month because I was keeping notes because I have a planner and I was using the, the homemade version of the budget diary. So I had exact notes of everything that was happening. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I could, I could go back. I thought in my head, I was like, I could go back to last year and I could document everything it, you know, that was happening step by step, how I got here. And I was just more and more getting the message of, no, don't go back. Just go from this point and go forward and just tell your story. So I got to a point where I was in the car every day and I was just talking to myself, like talking it out loud because I can't keep all that in my head. Things were happening so fast. I was tuned in. I was receiving inspired thoughts and, you know, just developing so fast that I couldn't even keep up with my own thoughts. So I would just talk and I'd be like, okay, I had to turn off the radio, turn off the audiobook, and be like, okay, this is what's going on right now. This is what I need to do. This is what's happening. Let me change this. Let me move that. And one day I was like, I need to just turn on the camera and record this and film this. And just instead of having a blog that I turned to an audio blog, which is a, another step, um, I would just make a video blog and just get all these things out. So, so Diane, what I'm doing is explaining to people if they've never seen my morning video, what the heck I'm doing. So that's what all this chitter chatter is about. Um, so I tried to so I started documenting every day what I was thinking about as it was happening. I tried to also do a weekend show, a weekend live show where I sit down with makeup on and with a nice background, with a camera set up in good lighting and all this stuff and talk through the topics that were on my heart. And I did that maybe five, four or five times. And I had to stop doing that because that was becoming stressful to me because it was extra steps in my day. Um, I used to be really critical of people who made, uh, I used to be critical of a lot of people, lots of different kinds of people. Like I was critical, I was unhappy and I was critical. But if people who made videos in the car and who were like multitasking, like I'm talking to you, but I'm doing this, you know, and I'd be like, don't multitask me. You know, I don't, If are you talking to me or are you driving? Like which, which one are you doing because if you're making a video, you need to be sitting there making your video. You don't need to be talking to me while you're driving. I was very critical of that. But I realize now that two things. Number one, my best, clearest thoughts happen when I'm driving. I think driving is extremely meditative. It's Especially if you're driving the same path all the time. It's not like I have to figure out where I'm going or consult a map or my navigation. I'm just driving for an hour in a straight line with no traffic. So it's extremely meditative and I get the best thoughts at this time. And then the other thing is, um, of course, that I can't remember the other thing because that's what happens when you say there's two things. If you say there's three, you remember two and not the last one. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Um, so I'll come back to it, I'm sure. I um, It's... It's, it's more important to me to create something and get it out there than to create something perfect that is just like stressful to me because I, my life is full, you know? And so I have, I mean, everybody's life is full. I mean, I don't know. I used to not have a full life. I used to be able to sit on the couch on the weekend and binge watch Netflix like a lot of people do. And that was, that was okay. I used to be able to do that I can't do that anymore I have a lot of stuff that I do that is important to me that I enjoy more than watching Netflix so I make these videos in the car which used to be my pet peeve and I am multitasking you but actually what I'm doing is I'm letting you in to my process and that is the whole point so the whole reason that I go live is to let you into my process so that you see what it takes to use the law of attraction in your life. That you see that it's not difficult, that it's super easy, 
that you see that like what my results are because the results come really fast um, and it's also a time capsule because I am convinced like I have looked into my future and I'm convinced that I'm gonna be a totally different person in a year than I am now because I'm a to totally different person now than I was six months ago and I know that's gonna keep happening because things are happening every single day and I'm losing weight can y'all tell I can see like my cheekbones now and I'm like ah! that's from keto diet okay keto diet is working because I have not I've, mi I've missed so many exercises I have not been working out consistently but keto diet is is definitely working so I know I'm gonna be a different person so this is like a time capsule for me and it's as much for me as it is for you because just like when I listen to those audio um, recordings I listened back to those and I was like wow you know that was a very that just seemed like a whole different person like a whole different train of thought like I know I'll watch these back later and be like oh wasn't she cute that was cute that, that she didn't know anything right but also because a lot of times people see the finished product and only the closest closest people to them can see they know you know it's like I went to high school with her you know what I mean like I went to high school with her but now she is you know on TV or whatever she's doing and she's a totally different person I wanted to have that on record so that anybody anybody who knows me doesn't have to wonder what it was like when I first discovered law of attraction what it was like when I first 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 figured out how to design my own life and how to be a co-creator in my entire life instead of um, instead of trying to be defensive and reactive to things that are going on around me instead what if I could make things happen in my life instead of just letting things happen and trying to figure out how to put the pieces back together so I wanted that process to be documented and I wanted everybody to know that you could do it too and that's why I tell you every day this is what I'm doing this is what I asked for this is how I asked for it this is what happened this is what I got all right so that is the background as to why I um, talk to myself on camera every morning because I was talking to myself without the camera before so at least now people are listening I'm not as crazy okay here's the other thing um, mostly my auntie which is fine my auntie is very sweet she's kind of concerned about me being a distracted driver and I would like to say that there is not a minute that goes by because I'm a worrier and I try to hide it. There's not a minute that goes by. There's not a day that passes that I don't also worry about distracted driving. I do wear my seatbelt every time. I'm not under the influence of anything except for source energy. I am super uber careful because it would be so traumatic for something to happen to me. I'm not even going to say that, y'all. Let's just let's turn our attention, our focus to something else. But I want to say that um, I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm paying attention. There's no traffic around me. I'm not staring at the camera for long periods of time and not paying attention to the road. Um, and um, I'm being careful. So I want you to know that. And I also want to say, do not try this at home. Like, don't try it yourself unless you drive on Highway 290 at 7.30 in the morning for an hour like that's the only time I would say unless you have a road that's completely the same peaceful as mine that you can a country road that you can drive that's straight and you don't have to focus on anything too much too much so today's episode is inspired by something that happened a couple days ago just like the last episode we had that four-day weekend for fourth of July so I wasn't um, making live videos because my routine was different and things kind of was like piling up and I was like oh I gotta tell them about this next week so um, I was what was I doing I was hanging out on my friend Mia and I'll link the stuff below if I remember <laughs> I was hanging out on my friend Mia's website which is beautiful miahimstad.com and she has an opt-in that pops up immediately that I need to make an opt-in that pops up immediately too. She has an opt-in that pops up immediately. It's a printable and it says um, input output. And I had no idea what that meant. So the first five times I ever saw it, I ignored it. And then finally I realized that at the top of the printable, there was a quote and there was a source for the quote, which is the smartest thing that she could ever do. 
because the source for the quote was a woman, I think her name is January Harshe. Harshe may be a little fancy, it might just be harsh. But January Harshe, H-A-R-S-H-E, and her husband have a podcast. So this is how things happen. So just to like give you the inside scoop. This is how things happen. If you are at point A and you're trying to get to point B in your life, this is how the universe will line things up. It's kind of like you never know. Like I wouldn't just go to that, this podcast, right? Like this pop-up would have to pop up five times for me to finally read the small print that led me to see who is January Harshe to realize, oh, this person has a podcast to actually go immediately to my podcast app and download the podcast and listen to the podcast and get completely transformed by this podcast, which leads me to have an inspired thought to tell you something that I learned in the podcast. So this is how things happen. And so when I talk about law of attraction, I talk about getting your vibration right. So you get yourself in a good, a good mental place where you're attracting things that are similar to the things you're putting out. If you're putting out negative energy, you're gonna get a lot of negative energy. But if you're putting out positive energy, things will like this will happen. And one thing will lead to another, will lead to another, will lead to another. All this stuff happened in a span of like 15 minutes. From the time of me reading a small print on her um, opt-in, her little printable, till the time of me deciding that I wanted to talk to you about this was like 15 minutes because it was just that amazing and hopefully it blesses you and that part I won't see because you'll take that into your life and run with it and then things will happen you know in your life that'll unfold and they'll change you that's how things happen it's easy that's what's that law of attraction is all about once you get the momentum going the universe takes over and gives you everything you need. It's kind of like when they say like doors, doors open and you don't even, you don't plan it. It's better than you could ever plan. That was my sidetrack. Getting back to this podcast with this um, January and her husband. Sorry, don't know his name. The last name is H-A-R-S-H-E. And she starts talking about input and output. And she's basically talking about self-care. Which you know has been an issue for me. So she's saying that we really have to give more attention to our self-care. Like it's not optional and we can't compromise on it because in the input output concept is that what are we putting out for other people? What are we putting out and doing for other people versus what are we putting into ourselves? You know, like how much care and consideration and love are you putting into yourself versus what you're putting out to other people? Is it even 1%? Is it even 5%? Is it 15%? Is it 50%? Like, are you doing half as much to protect your sanity as you are to help every other person in your life? This is the thing that stuck in my head. She said... And she used this term that we use all the time, and I never thought twice about it. But at that particular moment when she said this, I got a mental picture of something that made me go, whoa. She said, think about all the people you're holding space for. In that term, holding space, we use that all the time. Like in church, in church talk, we say standing in the gap. You know, who are you standing in the gap for? Because you always want to do that. If you have people that you love, when that when the person can't measure up, when they can't get from their point A to their point B on their own, you stand in the gap for them, be it financially, emotionally, a lot of times it's emotional, be it physically, you know, anything. We're standing in the gap for other people's in our other people in our lives. And if you don't use the term standing in the gap and use the term holding space or holding a place, it's the same concept that when someone else can't do it alone, you're helping them. Now, her point was, how many people are you holding space for? And as you're holding space for that person, what are you pouring into yourself to make sure that you are nurtured yourself? So the mental picture that popped into my head is this. 
you know how like you're going like you're gonna meet a girlfriend or something you're gonna meet a friend and a person's running late and say you're you're meeting at a restaurant busy restaurant you have to take a table and you have to hold that person's place until they get there now I'm just gonna say this usually I'm the one running late so the times when I've had to hold somebody's place it's been really stressful and usually it's me who's running late so I feel kind of guilty about that but think about this I really want you to put yourself in this in this scenario and really really think about how this feels because I'm everybody's done it you're sitting somewhere let's say you're in a restaurant you're waiting for a friend the waiter keeps coming over like can I get you something to drink can I get you started on something do you want to look at the menu and because you're waiting for this person you don't want to start without them you you're like no I mean it's uncomfortable to kind of keep telling a person no I'm waiting for somebody no I'm waiting for somebody and the restaurant's busy you know the tables are like people are waiting for tables and you're just sitting here taking up space for no good reason to wait for someone who's late it's uncomfortable right it's stressful think about you go to a theater and you have to hold you know hold the chair of someone next to you or last year we went to um, I think it was last year I don't know maybe it was two years ago we went to somebody's graduation and it was a packed you know situation sorry <laughs> I'm on call and so the nurse was calling me or somebody was calling me somebody from somewhere was calling me um, okay so a couple years ago probably we had we we were going we were going to somebody's graduation and there were like 10 of us right like that's how it is you know it's like all the family's gonna go but nobody is there at the same time so you have to like some of the good people get there early and save the whole row of seats and you save them by putting all the purses there and all the jackets there and all that and then you get like other people's family members who come in and the seats are filling up and they want the seat and so you gotta like put your arms all out and you have to space yourselves and it's stressful right it's stressful to like save so many seats and try to you know thwart people away and people get angry and they're like you're not sitting there and the person's like and it's just stressful right that's the mental picture I got when she said how many people are you holding spaces for and not pouring back into yourself and I felt like the the actual feeling and that's like a literal thought of holding a space but the figurative idea of that is the same it's the same stress if you have a family member or a friend or someone who is reciprocating that like you like you are holding space for them sometimes but they also can hold space for you sometimes that's okay like that's different because sometimes everybody needs a little help like that's totally fine but if we are totally honest with ourselves and you could you could make a list if you wanted to I'm a big list maker I like to write things down or say them out loud but if you if you made a list of all the people you're holding space for more often than not you will notice that you are holding space for people who are not there back for you like they're not holding space back for you it's not like I'm standing in the gap for this person and then you know when I need them they're gonna be there too no usually it's a one-way relationship like you're the strong one they're the weak one and that relationship has that dynamic and it's always gonna have that dynamic and that's stressful it's stressful because you pour out more than you get back and it's not just one person it can be like several people and that's on top of like I have my twins are almost four and I definitely like I'm taking care of them as my responsibility like when I talk about I've told you guys um, before I don't know if, if you ever watched it but um, and all the videos are on YouTube too they're all like there so you know if you if you ever get bored <laughs> um, but the metaphor is that you are in a boat a little boat a canoe okay you're in a canoe and you're do you paddle a canoe like what do you do you roll a canoe whatever it is when you're going downstream the only person in your canoe is you and if you have dependents like tiny children or something like that or like 
handicapped relatives or something like that. I mean, like dependents, real dependents, not your husband. Like my husband is not in my boat. He's in his own boat. He better get his stuff together. He's in his own boat. I'm in my own boat, but the kids are in a boat with me because I am responsible for them. Everybody else is in their own boat and they need to row their own boat. Like people, other people cannot be number one, trying to row my boat, which I let people do for years is row my boat and they were rowing it in a direction that didn't feel good to my soul. So I ended up feeling sad and depressed and dejected and all this stuff for years and years and years because I wasn't the one in control of my own boat. So I have to row my own boat. Not only that, I cannot climb out of my boat and get into somebody else's boat and try to row their boat. Like everybody has to row their own boat, okay? I don't know when I learned this concept, but I'm sure it's at the beginning of this year when all this personal development stuff for me was hitting the fan, I learned the concept of getting in my own boat and oh my gosh, it was mind blowing and I've, I've never been the same. Anytime I feel like somebody is coming into my space to give me extra responsibility for stuff that should be their responsibility and you know who those people are in your life where they all their, their, their stuff is always messed up it's always a hot mess they're always having drama that they create also and they're always coming to you for help like i said emotionally financially physically they need something from you and it doesn't end and if you help them it's not going to help them you know what i mean like it's still you could give them ten thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars and they're still going to be the next month coming to you like oh man you know what happened with my rent oh you know hey, this is just messed up can i come to your house and wash clothes all this stuff right so those people are not in your boat right you don't have to you don't have to get out of your boat and go row their boat for a little while and be like let me help you i just want to help no so that was life-changing for me because that gave me permission to stay in my own boat, take care of my kids, and let everybody else figure it out. Now, if you are holding space for someone else or standing in a gap for someone else who is not consistently reciprocating that or who is like an energy vampire who constantly needs and constantly needs and you're constantly giving and you're not refilling your own self, that's a recipe for burnout. That is bad, bad news. And so that's what this whole episode was about. Input, output, who are you holding space for? And I had such a vivid picture of holding someone's place. When that person, you know, is running late or whatever happened, and I'm trying to keep their space protected to the detriment of my own sanity <laughs> and peace my peace my calm is going away because i'm trying to help someone else and once that happens too many times it's not worth it okay now the flip side of that like i said is usually me who's running late so the flip side of that is the person who is running late now that could be stressful like when i'm running late i do feel stressed because i don't like to make people wait but some people don't you know they're just chronically like inconsiderate and when you're the person who is having their place held you are totally fine because you know usually if the person is gonna they're gonna take care of you like they're gonna save your seat they're gonna save your seat it's gonna be fine let me tell you a story that happened recently um my cousin was actually she was going to graduate but they didn't have enough tickets for the auditorium and so they were having this separate ceremony for people who um whose families couldn't fit like with the three tickets or whatever they got um they were gonna have the separate ceremony so she had that and i was coming from work directly to prairie view to go to that i was running late from work and by the time i got there which wasn't very late after the thing started the place was filled to capacity and there were fire marshals standing at the door and the fire marshals would not let me in. My mother, my mother, my stepdad, everybody from my family, my grandma, my aunties, everybody was in there and they were holding a seat for me. Now I decided, cause I, these days I try not to get stressed out. 
I decided that instead of standing there, instead of arguing with the fire marshal, because there were several people outside waiting and the fire marshals were like, they're not going to negotiate with you. I couldn't say like, my mom is holding my seat. They're kind of like, we don't care. You ain't getting in. It's already filled to capacity. So I decided I'm just going to walk around, look at them because I, I, I graduated from Prairie View and I said, let me go and see what's changed. I haven't been here in a long time. So I, I turned on live and it was like one of my first live videos and I made a live walking around at Prairie View and it was just wonderful and, you know, I really enjoyed it. And I just basically made lemonade out of lemons because I couldn't, there was no way I was getting into that, um, that auditorium. The fire marshals were standing at the door. Well, my mom was inside, little did I know, saving my seat. And they were like very combative African-American parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles trying to get my seat. And my mom was like swinging, not swinging, she wasn't fighting. But she was pretty stressed out trying to save my seat. And she let me know that afterwards. <laughs> she let me know. She's like, what happened to you? And, you know, well, what I think happened, I think she saw my live video later. I think later that night she saw my live video and was like, were you there the whole time? And you did not come inside the auditorium. I was in there and all those people were trying to crucify me for your seat. That's not how she said it, but that's how I heard it. And... I just felt so bad because I know what that's like. And you're looking around like you can't even enjoy the program because you you got your purse on the chair, people trying to fight you for the seat, and you're looking around like, where is she, where is she, where is she? Meanwhile, I'm outside having a grand old time making a video. And they held my seat the whole time. So just telling you that story so that you can understand that when you are pouring out of yourself to hold someone else's face, that other person may not even realize. They may have be having a wonderful time and may not even realize how stressful it is for you to do that. When you say yes, when you really need to say no, like you feel no, but you're a people pleaser or you're you know, an empath and you say yes instead of no, and it really puts you out, you know, like if somebody needs to borrow money because of some tragedy that's happening in their life or presumed tragedy or self-inflicted tragedy, they usually are, and you, you can't afford to help, but you do help and it messes your bills up for the next 15 months, <laughs> that happened to me then, um, you know, that person doesn't realize what all you're going through to help them. They don't realize it. They come back later and just be like, hey, by the way, can you do that for me again? And you're like, uh, no. So I just want to encourage you to understand that you can say no, because Lisa Nichols has this thing that she says that I love. Another thing that I've just gelled into my being is um, that you pour you pour from your saucer, not from your cup. So if you, if somebody, you know, wants a drink, here I am with the metaphors again, y'all. If somebody wants a drink, don't pour out from your cup. And it's a teacup. It's a small cup. Don't pour out from your cup. That's what you need. Pour into yourself. Pour into your cup until your cup runs over. What runs over, what extra you have, Give people from your saucer. You know, I don't know if you don't know the reference, I don't know, maybe you don't, but there's a saucer and there's a cup. And let the cup, your cup is you, let the cup run over. And whatever is extra, then you get from your saucer. Apply this to your financial situation. If you are in debt yourself, your cup is empty. If you're behind on your bills, your cup is empty. So when I was in debt, I was deep in debt and I'm still lending to people. I'm lending and I'm, I don't have it to lend. Like I owe it to somebody else. So how am I lending it to you? And it was like, don't do that. You know, you have to wait until your cup fills up, meaning you're current on your bills and you're, you're out of debt. And then whatever comes extra. So now when you have extra, then you lend to people. So we're current on our bills. Our debts are paid off. We don't have anything except for the house note. However, we're doing Dave Ramsey baby steps. And the baby step that we're on is to save up three to six months living expenses. So I'm still, my cup is still not full because 
we don't have our living expenses all the way saved up. So if somebody came to me now and was like, girl, I know you debt free, so let me get blah, 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 blah. I'm still going to say no. I'm still going to say no because my cup is not filled yet. My goals that I have for myself, I'm not at the point where I'm ready I, it's not run, running over to my saucer. I don't have extra, extra, extra to lend. And that can go with anything. And you have to know yourself enough to know what that applies to. Because that can apply to your time. If you don't have time to, you know, if I don't have time to do somebody else's work because my work is not done, I have to say no. And I can't feel bad about that. And that's very hard if you're a people pleaser. That's very hard to do. You feel horrible, but you really need to take care of yourself. So input and output, even emotionally. I'm gonna do one last one. Emotionally. I have these tiny children and I have noticed since I've become a mom and my kids are toddlers, I can't hear stories about tragedy with kids getting killed and maimed and molested like I can't hear that like emotionally I don't have enough emotional reserve to even listen to someone tell a story like that so I flee the scene I literally flee like if somebody starts saying like oh gosh you won't believe what happened ah! <laughs> like if you've ever been around me when it happens you'll see I go oh ah! I don't want to hear it 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 no 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 and sometimes we're in the morning meeting and people start talking, oh, did you see in the paper? And I'm just like, nah, 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 nah. I'll put my headphones in, in the meeting, I don't care. Because emotionally, I don't have, I don't have that to give. I don't, I can't be, I can't go there with you. Like I can't, now there are other things that can happen, but if it has something to do with children, I can't. Like don't, don't add me into that conversation. And so in the past, I would have listened. Like your ears are not somebody else's garbage can. I would just let people put garbage in and then you walking around feeling, you know, horrible and heavy and sad. And I can't, I can't do that anymore. So you have to know yourself enough to know, okay, this is what I can deal with today. This is how full my cup is. If I have some running over, then that's fine. But otherwise you gotta protect yourself. Nobody else is gonna protect you. You are rowing your own boat. Nobody else is rowing your boat for you. You have to, and you can't row anybody else's boat. You cannot. I'm giving you permission right now to row your own boat. No one else can, they don't get to dump their garbage on you and walk away. Like you have to, and it may seem rude. Like sometimes people are like, what? You don't want to hear the story? I got to tell you what happened to you. I don't want to hear what happened to you. I don't want you always have stories of tragedy and mischief and things are happening. Bad things are happening. I don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> you know? And so I find creative ways to get out of those conversations because I got to protect myself. I got little, I got things to do. I got kids to take care of. I got to take care of myself. Um, and that's just talking about kind of defensive stuff. That's not even talking about offensive self-care like meditation and exercise and getting massages and getting good sleep. Like those things are core foundational things of self-care and we haven't even gotten there yet. We've just, this is just like, this is the stuff you need to avoid. This isn't even the stuff that you need to do. So it's a whole big issue and it's, it's good when you know it because then you can change your life. But when you don't know it, like I said, you're just going through life letting things happen to you and you're trying to pick up the pieces of your life so we're not doing that anymore nope i refuse um so yeah that's the episode today i'm sitting in a parking lot i'm about to go in i'm going to this meeting y'all keep me lifted up in prayer because like i said if i get in here i'm always happy until like 8 45 9 o'clock and then i'm just like <sighs> <laughs> that's why I don't make these videos in the afternoon and the evening when I'm just spent my hair is like eh, and I have like dark circles under my eyes yeah so have a wonderful day and I hope that you maintain your positive vibe and your good vibrations for as long as possible just try for the next 15 minutes and see how it goes send me a comment below because I like to hear like what you're getting out of the episode and what um, you hear me say because it's different what I'm hearing myself say and what you hear me say and how you apply it to your life if it works for you who is your energy vampire and how are you trying to flee them what how much is in your teacup if you have something to run over 